Okay, uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, Guy Dorberg and I work for Satellogic. Uh, in this, meet, in this uh, session, I'm going to show some stuff that you saw in the previous session. But I think that after this session, I hope that in the next time that uh, the, the, the last presenter pre uh, will present his lecture, he will use also our uh, library. So uh, this talk is a... Uh, is produced uh, by Jupyter Notebook. So everything you see here is a Jupyter, not Jupyter Notebook. Uh, and you can see the slides and many other slides that we have on this GitHub that the Luric talks. Uh, so if you miss something, this slide exists there as well. So as, as we said, we're going to speak about the Luric. Uh, excuse me that I look at the screen all the time because I don't have here anything. So I will need to know what is going on there. Uh, but before we begin, I want to say who we are at Satellogic. Who we are at Satellogic? In Satellogic, it's a worldwide uh, company. We have branches in uh, Argentina, in Uruguay, in Barcelona, and in Tel Aviv. And what we're building is a constellation of satellites. Many, many, many satellites that uh, orbit the Earth uh, and take data out of the Earth. Currently, the data that we collect is uh, imagery images. So you can see the Earth uh, in the presentation, in the slide. And uh, as you can see, we have many, many satellites, or we're going to have many, many satellites that are going to orbit the Earth and to collect data, to collect images. These images are georeferenced. These images, we know that when, where they were locate, uh, located. But uh, Satellogic is not a satellite company. Satellogic is also uh, wants people to get insights out of this uh, uh, data that uh, we are collecting. So uh, we had to build for our own good, for our own sake, we had to build tools to work with uh, geospatial data. Uh, and of course, we're hiring. Uh, about myself, uh, as I already said, I'm, uh, I'm part of the team that actually uh, is taking the data from uh, the satellite and uh, storing it and uh, enabling access to uh, the data scientists that we have and uh, across the world and to our clients. I'm not a data scientist, but I enable data scientists doing what they are good at. And I'm a software engineer with experience in uh, big data, with pre uh, big data uh, projects. Uh, but I know that uh, for some of them, for you it might be too basic, but we, we need to define what is a geo, uh, geospatial data. What is a GIS? What are geo information system? Well, the, these are information that have data that has, that is geo referenced. That you can know where the uh, data is, uh, is where you can locate the data. You can read about the definitions here. Uh, these are only from Wikipedia, but there are enormous amount of information about GIS in the, the internet. Okay, so, but when we talk about data in, uh, in, uh, GI, in GIS, there are two forms of data. One form is vector data, and I think most of the data that we saw in the last presentation was vector data, and we have the raster data. Uh, in Satellogic, we have both uh, types, of, both forms of data. Uh, when talking about vector data, vector data are the product of uh, someone or something that uh, actually draws a shape in space and says that this shape at this point, uh, and uh, for example, with Latin and Lord, like for example, the tweets that uh, were was shown in the last presentations. So. In vector data, everything is a shape uh, that is co-referenced. And uh, you can store these uh, shape files in, uh, you can show the shape files in many types of shapes, uh, files, for example, the SRI shape files and the GeoJSON. When talking about raster data, that's the product of cameras, for example. Then each of the data has a, a pixel uh, reference. For example, you can, you can think of it as painting. We are painting uh, the ocean in this uh, picture for blue, and we are painting the uh, earth to be brown, and the clouds over there. Okay, but vec rasters and vectors can exist outside of a GIS. What makes them part of a GIS is 
that they are georeferenced, that they know, you know what, where the polygon is, uh, is, is drawn. And you know where the raster, where the camera took this raster as a, uh, uh, captured. Uh, and of course, also mentioned in the previous slides, we're talking about projection. Uh, because the Earth is not uh, uh, flat, it, is, uh, it has different meaning, uh, the way that you project your polygons and your uh, raster's locations on Earth. So we have the two forms of data and we have this pro projection. And uh, in Telluric, what we try to do is to make our life simpler in that uh, aspect. But uh, as you saw already in the previous slides, there are many uh, libraries in this field. This only some of them. Uh, and also, I think that some of these uh, projects were already uh, mentioned before. And what, what we're trying to do in Telluric is not to reinvent the wheel. We are using some of these or all of these uh, envir uh, libraries inside Telluric and, and, uh, build and uh, implementing some code, some glue code, so it will make your life easy. So I think that now we are about ready to start to talk about our library. Uh, so Telluric, what we want to do? We want to make uh, projection of our operations easy. That's not, that doesn't mean that uh, it didn't exist before, before us. We just want to make it easy. We want to make simple input output for rasters and vector data easy. Again, it, we didn't invent it. We just make it easier. And we want to have interactive visualization easy. As I, I remind you that everything that you see here runs on a Jupyter notebook. Uh, it's a, uh, so the maps that you're going to see, this is going to be a JS presentation with maps. And the maps that you're going to see is, uh, uh, are rendered inside the, inside the Jupyter. Okay, so first of all, we need to import Telluric. So import Telluric STL. Why only NumPy has NP? We have TL. Uh, and we also import the uh, uh, projections that we're going to work with. So the first thing we, we, we need to do, we, we, I, I want to show you what I want to do, is to define a polygon. So here I defined the polygon by defining uh, the bounding box of the polygon. Uh, in that case, I handpicked this, uh, uh, these um, points, uh, and that defines gush done. If I print the, the gush done uh, variable, you will see that it is a polygon. This is a shapely polygon. You will see that this is a polygon and the, the series. But what's fun about that? If you go to, as I said, we put extra attention on visualization. So if you now go to uh, your uh, Jupyter notebook, you will get this plotted on a map. And you can know where the polygon exists. Now, you can use, uh, you can use also uh, shapely geometry directly in cases that uh, I think in most cases. Uh, and it works the same. In this, uh, again, I did hand, hand draw it. And this is the uh, South Tel Aviv area. OK. Uh, now, after you have a vector in your head, you can do uh, basic operations. For example, uh, you want to find the center uh, of uh, the polygon that you have. Uh, the marker icon is not there, so I will point. Here, is, here there should be a marker icon. On a Jupyter notebook, you will have a, a Python uh, marker. And that calculates the center of the uh, um, polygon. If you want the real area in square meters, something that also was mentioned in the previous slide, you can get it by only, click, uh, on, only using the area attribute. Uh, you can also have geometric relations. Again, we didn't invent it. We're using uh, Shapely and others. But uh, it makes your life easy, because you can just do Gush Dan is in South Tel Aviv, and of course not, while South Tel Aviv is in Gush Dan. Uh, we also made some uh, easy work for you with, uh, subscri with, subs uh, with subtraction. For example, in this case, we say which of the pixels are in, uh, are in uh, South Tel Aviv and not in Gush Dan. Of course, none. But in this case, which of the pixels are in Tel Aviv, uh, are in Gush Dan, but not in South Tel Aviv. And you can see the hole over there 
and you got a new polygon that's a new shape, you will see uh, in the uh, next example, you will see two shapes. Here it's a single shape, a polygon with the hole inside. Uh, okay, before we proceed, there are uh, two more models that we uh, talk about in Telluric. We talk about features, which are actually geovectors with attributes and feature collections. And creating a feature is just adding a map of attributes to the vector. I will not uh, show you a lot of uh, uh, example of features here. I encourage you to go to the um, to go to the, to the website to the uh, Telluric sorry to the GitHub uh, source code and to see uh, examples over there. It is very documented, uh, but we will we'll proceed here. Uh, but if you go to feature collection, it gives you the opportunity to plot everything, all the features that you have on the map. Now you're going to be a, to see a more complex example of that feature uh, shortly. So this is about vectors. Yes. Now let's talk about raster data. Okay. So as I mentioned before, uh, raster data it came from our in our case came from the satellites from the satellites. Okay. So what we're going what we're doing here, we are uh, actually opening. We want to start to work with a raster. So we have a um, model called Geo Raster. And the first line of code does nothing. The first line of code is a lazy loading of the location of the raster. If you notice, this location is, um, is on the internet. It's not on my local disk, but it can also be on my local disk. Only when, uh, now that, what I'm going to tell you, it depends on the file format that you're using. If you're using uh, GeoT for uh, other f uh, file format, you can see that it, it's divided to headers. So, if you want only the CRS, it will not need to bring all your data in. So printing the CRS and printing the band names uh, uh, should be very not expensive operation that does not require uh, loading all the data. Now, let's continue. Uh, now, there, the footprint is the bounding box of the uh, uh, raster. And again, this is a geo vector that I mentioned before, so we can uh, plot it on the map. And uh, of course you can visualize it. Visualizing again, it's very easy. And uh, in that case, it's an RGB raster. This is why it visualized uh, beautifully, but we can also visualize the gray band, uh, gray scale. And also you can access the data. This is how the, the data of the raster actually uh, look like. You have the image property. The image property has the value of each of the, va of each of the uh, pixels. Uh, okay, and another feature that we made easy is the crop. Uh, in that case, I shrinked the rectangle uh, of the, the bounding box of the, uh, um, of the raster. And you can see a smaller part of the uh, raster, again visualized, and it, it is also a real raster. So you, it also has the image, and it also has the CRS, and it also has everything else. And you can also slice using the slice uh, the slice syntax of uh, Python. And in this case, it is stretched because of visualization. The data itself is not stretched. It's only because of visualization. Uh, okay. Now, uh, I want to show you uh, another method that we have, which is rasterization. A rasterization is the action of getting vectors and making out of them a rasters. Why would you want to do that? You want to do that because there are algorithms that run on, uh, on rasters and that require vector information. So from, for our data scientists, what was the best was to run the same algorithm on both, on the vectors data and on the um, raster data. So in this case, I took the OpenStreetMap uh, of Tel Aviv and I rendered the buildings. What you see here is a feature collection of uh, buildings in Tel Aviv. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take out of this feature collection, I'm going to create a raster. So here, if you see FC, feature collection, rasterize dust resolution one, which means one meter per pixel. I created a raster out of this, uh, out of this um, uh, buildings, uh, vectors. Uh, where, where there was a building, the value of the pixel is one. 
where the building, when there wasn't building, the value was zero. Uh, we have more complex uh, version of rasterize. Check it out. Uh, now let's talk about projection. Again, we made projection easier. So uh, the Gushtan projection that I made before, it's a WGS84. Uh, and now I want to project it to, um, to Web Mercator. So this is how I do it. Uh, again, it, we didn't invent anything. We're using Shapely under the scene, but, uh, or uh, Reproj, but it's, uh, it's done just easier. Uh, and also a, pro a projection, it's also about changing the ratio. So I don't, didn't find any uh, real life example of that, but here I changed the width and the height of the previous uh, raster that you were showing. Okay, now I want to show you how you can use the crop that I showed you before in the rasterization in order to do distributed computation using our library. Uh, okay. But before we continue, some background about COG, about cloud-optimized GeoTIFF. I will do it super fast. A cloud-optimized GeoTIFF, it's a GeoTIFF that has, that uses the HTTP GET uh, range, the HTTP GET range uh, uh, property, and you can actually read only parts of the data. You don't need to read the entire data, you can read only parts of the data. Again, I encourage you to go to read about it because it has a lot of uh, implications, but again, we didn't invent COG, we're just using it, yes? Uh, and why COG is good for us? Because what we're going to do, we're going to split a workload into regions. Each worker in our cluster is going to use the COG and the region in order to fetch only the region that is interest, that it is interested in. And we're going to distribute the workers across our cluster. So first, we... Uh, uh, divide our world to our footprint to a uh, uh, grid, to uh, regions. Uh, we could use here the raster footprint or any other footprint, that, uh, any other um, uh, geometry that uh, we, we think it's uh, interesting. This method generates all coordinates. Easy of charge, you can, uh, no charge, you can take it. And uh, now you, we have regions, we can use the crop to get only the region. Again, the, the stretching is because of visualization. Now, how we do it on a distributed cluster? In this case, I'm using Dask, but not necessarily only on Dask. I, create, I took the raster URL over here. Okay, and here for each worker, I define the raster, the RRI and the raster file name. I get the raster, geo raster. Again, this does nothing. And then I do the crop. Because of the geo tiff uh, property, we will get here only the data, only the chunk of data that we actually wanted. Uh, think about it on many rasters, not only on a single raster. And we run compute and get out the list of max. In this case, it's just it max, yes, but uh, you can think of a more interesting uh, scenario later. Okay, so that's it. That's what I wanted to show you about. Uh, now I will tell you what we're doing with it in Satellogic. In Satellogic, we have uh, image processing uh, uh, pipelines that are using Telluric. We are have, we have data scientists that uh, do that get un insights using Telluric, and uh, more and more things that I don't know now. And future work, we'll co it's in a uh, project in active work. We are, this is how we do things uh, in Sotologic, so we are maintaining it, and you are uh, welcome to start using it, write to us uh, issues, and even contribute. Uh, thank you, and uh, if there are any, qu thank you, if, and if there are any questions, I'm here.